You know, the thing that bothers me about woodlands is that a lot of uh, very bad things happened there. And the public, I don't think, knows about it. Woodlands covers 40 acres. In 1981, it had a budget of approximately $34.5 million. Sterling Woodlands facility was in operation for almost 130 years until 1996. Cases of abuse have been documented in every decade it was open. It was controversial even as far back as then. Institutions were the philosophy of the time. My understanding is, is that Woodlands started as a school and then it just grew and grew so that there were just too many people and it basically became a housing situation. I mean, Woodlands was 1,500 people. You know, lock and key. Staff all wore a big belt of chains. Every room was locked. They had a system that was like a small town and nobody could infiltrate that. A dental, you name it, they had everything there. People died and lived and were born and buried and nobody there, it was just, it was just Woodlands. I remember the first time we went, I was helping um, invite three gentlemen out into community um, towards the end of the movement of deinstitutionalization. And the drive-in, we were being told kind of, okay, you're gonna meet this one man, he's in a full helmet and a face mask, don't look him in the eye. Then we get there and we had to go through all these checks. Here I am thinking, okay, how are we gonna welcome these people if we can't look at them? So in my mind it was kind of like, okay, we have what Woodland says and perhaps how they interacted with them, but that's not gonna be how we are. It was like a prison, but you hadn't committed a crime. It was expected that, that this was what you would do with your family members. You would put them in the institution where they could be cared for. We had parents there that were very, very vocal about deinstitutionalization. They wanted their kids out into community. And we, uh, we thought, yeah, we can, we can do this. I mean, we didn't really know what we were doing so much either. <laughs> But we had a good value base, and we believed in the concept of deinstitutionalization. And so we, we went for it. Then the opportunity for relationships to develop and for uh, people to sort of integrate, that was an important step in deinstitutionalizing. So visually, we're people seen. were seen. You know, if you don't see things with your own eyes, you create fear, and people were afraid. When we first started bringing people into community, they were the conduit for changes of hearts and understanding. They did it by their presence. They were among us and they taught us how to accept the things that were dealt us. Our, our task was to make home, make home. whatever their home there would is. be. And to do it in a way that we could all experience it. Even the people that uh, were in institutions for so long didn't know what home was about. The time that we're able to spend with each person, being person-centered, it's really, really encouraging. Getting a sense of a person's dreams for their life and putting it on paper and sitting down with them, okay, what would you like to do? Even in, in the next year, what are some desires or dreams or hopes that you have and help to support them in that? Seeing them for who they were, we had a health care plan that was established for each person to meet their needs and to make life as easy as possible for them. In 10 years, I think we developed eight homes and purpose-built from the ground up. The commitment that we could voice to families that we were going to be there for the long haul. And here we are 50 years later, still doing, still committed. Things have changed, but fundamentally, the philosophy remains, the value system remains. I oh, certainly yes, appreciate the fact that I can come at any time. <laughs> the yeah. only time I can't come is because Tanya is too busy doing things. <laughs> 
And I must admit that I don't have the energy anymore to, to do what Tanya can do now in, in her home. My way, or society's way, is not the only way. You've got to leave room for those differences, or we're all exactly the same, and what are we going to learn from each other? And it's that freedom that we're all entitled to, that so many people were granted, right? We're not human because of what we do. We're human because of who we are. Those kids are going to experience a different, a different life. They're in a better place. The community is in a better place. And I think we're all in a better place for it.